Well, hello, Digital DJ Tips crew. It's Phil here in the Digital DJ Tips lab for another Thursday Q&A live. It's awesome to be here, as ever. Looking forward to helping you with all your DJing questions, queries, challenges, and all the rest of it for the next, I don't know, see how long it takes, see how many questions you've got. Could be half an hour, could be an hour. But uh, that's what it's all about on a Thursday. It's our show, which is all up to you. Whatever you want help with, I'm here to help you with. Now, if you're wondering, who is this guy? I'm Phil. I'm the person who founded Digital DJ Tips, the leading online DJ school. Uh, Also the person who wrote this book, Rock the Dance Floor, which you might know if you've been looking for how to DJ books on Amazon. But I don't want you to go and buy this on Amazon. Oh no, I want you to join Digital DJ Tips. We're we're worth joining. It's good fun joining us, being one of the community. Just go there, djtips.co slash join, and I'll give you a copy of the book just for joining. Can't say fairer than that, folks. Uh, So we are here to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. We do that through our DJ courses. We do that through our website, digitaldjtips.com, which I'm sure you know. Uh, And we also do it through our YouTube, Facebook and Instagram channels and all the other places where you find us online helping you with all this stuff so that's us that's what we do but as i say this is all about you today and it's all about your questions queries challenges things that you need help with all i ask as always is if you get some value from this today if i answer something that you want to know if someone someone else asks a question and you're like hey uh, i didn't know that and that was helpful all i ask is that you hit that share button. And also, just a little tip, if you're watching this at some point in the near future and you're thinking, I wish I caught that live. I wish I was actually watching that live. It is live, by the way. We are here live. Um, It's probably because you weren't subscribed and you didn't have notifications on. And you can do that by hitting subscribe and hitting that notification bell on YouTube and doing similar stuff on all the other platforms as well. We're live on Twitch, on YouTube, on our Facebook group, Digital uh, DJ Network group, which is called Global DJ Network. Uh, We're live on our Facebook page. Uh, and we're also live. Did I mention Mixcloud? Well, what if I didn't? We are. Although it wasn't looking very live to me on Mixcloud when I checked it a minute ago, but we might be. Anyway, Mixcloud people, uh, we are glad to be there if indeed we are. So enough of our intro. That's what it's all about today. Hello to everyone just joining in. Alex says, uh, oi oi from Scarborough by the sea, North Yorkshire in England. Uh, so shout out to you, to Jose or Jose says, thanks for your reviews. I get my Mevo camera tomorrow. It's the most efficient way for me to go on Twitch. Oh, you're going to love it, Jose. You're going to love your Mevo camera. They're great fun. I'll be using mine on Sunday for the, uh, the Balcony Beats DJ set. So look at your watch now, people. An hour from now, on Sunday, come and join us on this channel, unless you're on Facebook, in which case just head over to Twitch or YouTube, uh, and uh, I'll be DJing live, looking forward to that. Uh, Hello to Sherwin in Toronto, to Phil, um, Paul, Kevin, lots and lots of our regulars piling in here, to Scott, uh, who's got a question, so let's start with the question. Uh, So Scott says, what's the difference between your DJ courses and Crossfaders DJ courses? I'm looking at something to help me improve in my XDJ RX2. So look, there's lots of schools out there that can help you. I can't tell you about other people's courses, but I can tell you about our courses. So we base our courses on what we discovered when we wrote this book, which is that there are five areas of DJ, which is gear, music, techniques, playing out, and promoting yourself. Without those five areas of DJing, which are at the beginning of the book, and as I say, you can have a free copy of this if you join Digital DJ Tips. Uh, Without those five five areas of DJing, without knowing what you need to do in all those five areas, the techie stuff, the gear, getting your music right, getting your techniques right, learning to perform, and learning to promote yourself, you're not gonna succeed as a DJ. So all of our courses, are based around making sure we give you enough of those five things for you to succeed. Uh, we think that there is too much narrow training on just like mixing, and which is all great. It's in techniques. It's what we teach. But you need the whole thing. So that's how we teach. Now, remember, we have a, a year, whole year money back guarantee on our courses. Uh, if you're going to buy courses, if you're going to spend a lot of money elsewhere, just check that you're getting the chance to give your money back if it's not working for you. With us, it's a year because we figure that within a year, you're going to have done the course, right? Uh, and if not, you didn't do it, you didn't enjoy it, it wasn't for you, get your money back. Uh, and also our courses are for life with full support as well because we, we know that life gets in the way. So as I say, you know, there's lots and lots of courses out there from lots of schools. Uh, if you want to know what theirs are like, Ask them, but I've told you a little bit about how you know our philosophy and how ours work. Uh, and if you want to get, improve on your on, on your DJ gear, it's really worth thinking about what you want to improve on. Uh, because if you just want to learn more about the gear, uh, then 
the instruction manual is a good place to start, frankly. If you want to learn how to mix on that gear, then what kind of mixing do you want to do? House, open format, um, you know, EDM, big big room style mixing, uh, really, really technical mixing, because if you want to do those things, we've got courses for that. But they'll work on all DJ gear, not just the XDJ RX2. So we've got um, our Pro Mix, our, our um, uh, mixing power skills course, which is kind of like how to power mix. It's how to get past doing the basics. Uh, we've got the uh, house mixing mastery, which is perfect for mixing house. We've got James Hypes DJ course that he made with us, which is obviously going to teach you uh, that style of DJ and that very technical style. We've got laid back Luke doing his big room EDM thing. So we've got courses that will teach you all those kinds of mixing. Uh, so anyway, I didn't want to talk too much about our DJ courses at the beginning, but I'm going to go where the questions go. Uh, so if you've got questions about any area of your DJing and you want to guide this whole broadcast in that direction, you know what to do. Ask them. All your comments are coming up here. But anyway, thank you very much for uh, that question. Uh, Scott, and I hope it helped you. So uh, someone on our Facebook group is saying, I hope to buy my first set of decks next month. I'm probably going to go with Pioneer, but I'm just wondering your opinion as to which software is best to go with in the long run. Serato or Rekordbox? I'm a complete beginner, by the way. If you want to play all kinds of music, open format, and you are potentially wanting to scratch, and if you're in the United States of America, go for Serato because it's the most popular. If you definitely know in the future you want to play in clubs, probably go for Rekordbox because it means that you can start on a little controller and you can work up and up and up and in the end you can be playing in clubs without having to change your software. Of course, people play in clubs with Serato as well, but the easiest software to play with in clubs is Rekordbox without a doubt. So um, you can't really go wrong with either of them, anonymous user on Facebook. By the way, all you people watching on our Facebook group, the reason you're anonymous is that we're not allowed to bring your names into this broadcast software. So um, I know you're not trying to be anonymous and... Uh, and um, mysterious, uh, but that's the way it works. Hello to Eric, hi to Craig, uh, and to Bill in Flintshire. Hi to Kevin, uh, who says, Gok1, slated Mixcloud. Oh, share a link, I wanna know. I wanna know what went on there. Um, so, hi to Robert. Uh, DJ Yard Flex Finley is tuning in from Jamaica, and a massive happy birthday from all of us to you, DJ Yard Flex Finley over there in, ja in Jamaica. Hi, AB. Uh, Jason says, can you transfer all your music, hi Jason by the way, can you transfer all your music from an HP laptop to a MacBook Air or is that not possible? Yeah, of course it is. They're just MP3s. Put them where you want. doesn't matter whether they're on a Mac or whether they're on um, a Windows computer or whatever. If you are using DJ software, it gets a little bit more complicated, but without knowing what software you're using and what you're trying to achieve, I can't help you further with that one. But yes, you can move your stuff between uh, between platforms, no problem. Apparently we are live on Mixcloud with absolutely no issues, my team are telling me in the chat, uh, but I can't see your comments for some reason. Uh, so I will uh, instead, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I will, uh, I'll go to the live page, Mixcloud people, uh, which is mixcloud.com slash digital DJ tips slash live, if I remember rightly. Uh, no, it says page not found. So uh, I've got no, <laughs> no idea what our live page is on Mixcloud, no idea at all. Let's see if I just go to live when I'm tuned in. No, nope. so team, share the link with me so I can get the comments off Mixcloud. I would have thought that would have worked, but hey, what do I know? Uh, so hello to Jose uh, in uh, Guatemala. Hi to Janos in Bristol. Rahul says, what's the best and cheapest way to convert a record box database to Tractor and vice versa? I'm gonna to recommend to you my good friend who is conspicuous by his absence here actually today, uh, um, from the Netherlands, Mixmaster G, who makes a wonderful little utility called DJ Conversion Utility. Uh, DJ Conversion Utility costs you just 20 euros, uh, and this will allow you to convert in all those weird and wonderful ways that you can see going on on that graphic there. Uh, so if you want to convert your library from any system really nowadays to any other, DJ Conversion, conversion Utility is the one to get. And you can find that by just, um, just Google DJCU. So I'll show you. DJCU into Google, press enter, and then the first one will be DJ Conversion Utility. Uh, and there you go. Uh, so apparently it's mixcloud.com slash live slash digital DJ tips, not slash digital DJ tips slash live. And that is how you can uh, 
that is how you or rather I can see the comments. So hello everyone on Mixcloud, I've got you now. Hi to Peter in Sweden over there, hi to Phil who's in uh, Rochford uh, in the UK, to Nell Ferns in Boston, uh, to the one, uh, the one XO in Miami and everyone else tuning in on Mixcloud. If you want to ask a question there, I've got your window open now and I can see your questions. Uh, so the next question that's coming live is from uh, DJ Matt Dodge who says, I'm wanting to move songs that I haven't played for a while uh, to an external drive. How long would you say is a good time to say, yeah, I'm not gonna play that? Three months, six months, with record pools taking off songs, I don't wanna delete them. Right, okay, so that's a good question. Uh, and so let's talk about that one. By the way, um, I, um, I'm now back on the screen, which is nice, isn't it? So that's a good question. So there's a couple of things here, Matt. Uh, my rule is, if I haven't played a song for a year, and I don't think I'm gonna play a song for the next year, in other words, am I going to play it in the next 12 months? Uh, have I played it in the last 12 months? If the answer is no to both of those questions, out it goes. It doesn't stay in my main collection. But the other thing that I'm getting from you is, with record pulls taking off songs, I don't want to delete them, says Matt. Well, why don't you just put them on a external drive that you can just put in the top of your wardrobe, for instance. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I'd say a year back and a year forward. You know, Think about it. Am I likely to play this in, in the foreseeable future? Or have I played it recently? And if not, get rid of it. Uh, but my other rule is, it's a very good rule, never add a song to your collection or take a song out of your collection without listening to it first. So don't just say, oh yeah, there's a load of new pop, in it goes. No, 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 no. You've got to listen to those tunes and ask yourself, Will, am I going to play those? Do I really like them? But when you're getting rid of tunes, listen to them as well, because you might say, well, I didn't think I was going to play that. I haven't played it for a year and I didn't think I was going to play it for the next year because I didn't think I liked it. But actually, it's brilliant and suddenly it's back in your A-list. So don't add, or, don't add or remove things from your uh, from your collection without listening to them. Scott's saying thank you for the advice. Uh, I'll certainly check out your courses, been following you for years. Yeah, so it's the mixing courses you want really, Scott, I think, you know, you know, people don't think you have to buy a DJ course for the gear you've got. That's like going to a driving school that teaches you to drive the car you drive, right? They're all the same. All the systems are the same. All the software's the same. All the hardware's the same. Yes, they've got a few features around the edge that are different, just like a car has got a few features that are different, but you'll work those out on your own. Uh, it's 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 the same whatever you're using. And the way we teach DJ, and we want you to learn to be to be confident to DJ on anything. So that's the way it works with us. Uh, but the mixing courses sound like the ones you want. And as I said, we've got loads of good mixing courses. So I'll show you where to find them on the site. Head to the DJ Courses tab at the front, click on essential courses and scroll down till you get to individual, sorry, to uh, the mixing courses, which are, I think I've just scrolled right past them. Here they are. Here's the mixing courses. Mixing cookbook courses, they're called. So you've got a James Hype course here, a layback loop one, a house course. Mixing power skills is a good introduction to kind of mixing beyond the basics. Uh, and then we've got an open format scratch course and we've got mixing mastery, which is really well suited for people who want to play weddings and mobile DJing and so on. So look, there's enough there to keep you going for years in our mixing courses. Thanks, Scott. Uh, DJ Skojo69 says, when I'm doing an instrumental or acapella mashup, would you add a bit of reverb to the acapella track? No, because usually an acapella comes from the studio where it's already had reverb added to it. Of course, there's no rules. One thing I like to do is add an echo to acapellas. So I might add an echo for, you know, half a, uh, half a beat, three quarters of a beat, or even a whole beat. Uh, and then on the last word of a, a line, so the acapella might have a line and then a bit of a gap and then a line and a bit of a gap. On the last word, I'll trigger that echo and let it echo out. You know, that's that's a bit of fun to do, but not as a rule anyway. Uh, no need to do that as a rule. So hello to Travis in Toronto, who says, I've got an idea to throw events during COVID that will be within the regulations. Tell us more, Travis. Uh, my problem is that I'm just a new DJ and I'm certainly no promoter. And I'm worried if I take my idea to a club or to a promoter, they'll just steal it and leave me in the dust. Any advice considering I have no real network? Yep, do it. If it's such a good idea, do it. Don't take it to anyone. Do it yourself. Learn to do this yourself. Uh, promoting club nights is a... Science, it's an art, it's hard work, but there's no qualifications needed to do it. Everyone just got off their feet and started at some point or another. Get a venue, I have no idea what your idea is, but you know, uh, start very, very small and do it yourself uh, would be my advice. Uh, no one's gonna listen to you anyway. And it's not that people are gonna steal your idea, they're just not gonna listen to you, Travis, because they don't know who you are. And that's the truth, uh, just giving it to you straight. So, so do it yourself, my friend. Uh, open your phone, find everyone on your phone who would possibly come to something you, you, you do, invite them, twist their arm, pay them to come, do what you've got to do, uh, throw one event uh, and take it from there. Uh, but don't, you know, get out your own way. 
promote it yourself. Don't don't be don't be down on yourself. Don't think you need help. Don't think you need to go to big big promoters. Do it yourself. Uh, so Jamie says, I only just got the notification to say that you're live on Mixcloud. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit rubbish sometimes, isn't it? But I'm glad you got it anyway. Uh, Kevin is uh, is, prop, is propping me up here, saying, Yep, Serato and Recordbox are indeed both good choices. Uh, hello to Tony in Bristol, UK. Uh, hi to Ivan uh, in Mexico. He says, Hola. Hola a ti, Ivan. What is the... Uh, hola a usted, Ivan. Uh, what is the best software to start doing remixes and to produce music? Do you know if this type of software runs well in a Mac with eight gigabytes of RAM? I would say there's two choices. You can get Ableton Live. Uh, in fact, there's two, two ways you can go. You can go the full-on production software way, so Ableton Live, which you can currently get, I think, still free for 90 days. Uh, Ableton Live. There is FL Studio, which is very, very popular as well, or Logic. They're the three most popular kind of big production software suites. Or you can go the other way and join the, the growing number of people who are just making beats on software. And what they tend to be using is something like Serato Studio. Uh, and yes, you can do it on a reasonably modern laptop with uh, eight, gig, eight, eight gigabytes of RAM. Yep, you can, Ivan. Uh, so yeah, really, if you want two recommendations, Ableton Live or Serato Studio. Uh, both of them you can definitely get a free trial on. So give them a go and see see how it goes. You don't need anything else to start producing, by the way. You don't need keyboards or anything. You just need headphones to plug into your laptop uh, and you're off, you're ready to go. How can I split a mix and make it fit on a CD, says Adam. It's a great question. And again, I often say, we haven't planted these questions. Uh, it's a great question. So uh, it's something that you can do on a um, piece of software called Audacity. Audacity is a wave editor and it's a it's a free piece of software you can get it for uh you can get it for mac and windows even on linux and and you load it in and you put track markers on the tracks as your mix goes along and you can then export that as individual tracks and then you put it into your cd burn, burner software burn it and you'll get the tracks with all the track you know the track names on the cd uh, remember to turn off the two second gap in your cd burner software when you're burning it you want complete no gap between those tracks so your mix flows now if that all sounded a bit complicated the good news is uh, that we have a, a course that teaches it it's called pro mixtape formula and it will take you from beginning to end uh, through making a dj mix from literally from conceiving that mix to recording it the right way to record it how to edit it afterwards so you never have to stop and go back when you make mistakes it's a great trick to know and then how to do things like burning it to cd and so on uh, the good news is that this course that i'm showing you now in literally uh less than a week is going to be completely relaunched. A complete new version of this course. The all new Pro Mixtape Formula, re-recorded, reconceived from the ground up for 2021, because this was made seven years ago, believe it or not. Uh, and the even better news is that if you want to get the course, you get the upgrade for free. Uh, so if you bought that course today to find to go to the bits where we talk about how to burn CDs and to sort that out for yourself in a week's time, we'll just give you the new version because that's what we do. Even if you bought it seven years ago, you'll get the new version because that's what we do. We like to look after our students. So uh, so buy with confidence if you want to if you can't wait a week for that. Uh, so I hope that was helpful for you, Adam. Uh, Phil in Albert and Alberta, Canada says, I'm still in lockdown here. I'm wondering what to use for PA speakers and a mixer for a wedding setup. I might have two weddings this year. That's really good news. And of course, I can't answer that because I don't know how big these weddings are. The rule is five watts per person. So if you've got 100 people at your wedding, a 500 watt PA system is what you need. But that is a very rough rule of thumb. For instance, if the wedding is outside, you want to double that at least to 10 watts per person. And then, of course, that I'm not talking about the quality of the uh, sound system there or uh, the SPL, the sound pressure level, which is arguably a better way of judging volume of, uh, judging volume of PA systems or the brand or anything. Uh, so if anyone would like to uh, chat to Phil in Alberta, Phil is chatting on our Facebook Global DJ Network group. Uh, head in there and Phil will be uh, in the comments asking this question and help Phil out. But I hope I've got you on the right path there, Phil. Uh, so uh, George in Canada says, I'm glad that Serato released an extension for Twitch users. What are your thoughts? So if you've missed this, Serato has been uh, showing a bit of love for Twitch recently. It's on the, the website. Uh, we've uh, 
covered it here. So Serato has added a, you see this uh, this lady DJing here with all the uh, the paintings behind her. Well, that is a green screen free drop-in that Serato has offered along with loads and loads of others that you can use to jazz up your live streams if you're a live streaming DJ. Uh, and they've also done a Twitch extension, which you can see here on the screen now, which if you're broadcasting on Twitch, lets you put the artist and song title on the screen for each track you're playing as long as you're using Serato. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, so what do I think? I think it's brilliant. I mean, I think Serato are trying to make live streaming a little bit more easy for people, trying to make it a little bit more uh, accessible, you know, to, to, do, to do the stuff that they're showing here, to have a, a green screen background and to have, you know, the artist and song title appearing on the screen is pretty advanced stuff. And the fact that they're giving this stuff away for free is great, but you're going to have to jump through a few hoops before you get that far. You know, I wouldn't recommend you trying to do that stuff at the beginning of your live streaming journey. Just try and get a live stream under your belts. Uh, again, we've got a course on live streaming. We made this course last year because, uh, well, we were in lockdown like everyone else and we wanted something to do. So we thought, what can we do? I know, let's make a live streaming course. That's what we're all up to. It's called DJ Live Streaming Made Easy. Uh, and it is kind of the Bible if you want to learn how to live stream properly from like using your phone to do it all the way up to building your own studio. Uh, so if you want to learn about the gear, the software, going live, performing uh, and uh, and see real setups from bedroom all the way up to a pro studio, it's all in this course. So uh, to give you a heads up there, if you're serious about live streaming, we're about to launch the um, results of our DJ census. You remember the DJ census that we conducted uh, a month or two ago? Uh, we had that big prize draw attached to it. Well, the prize draw happened and the winners are all informed and stuff, but we're about to publish the results. They're going to be going uh, live on the website tomorrow, I think. And one of the things in there was how popular live streaming has really become. Uh, most of you have uh, either tried it or you say you want to try it. Nearly half of, the, of our audience say they want to try live streaming. Um, but that means you're a beginner. That means you really haven't done anything yet. And I wouldn't start by trying to do all the clever stuff. Just start by trying to get a live stream under your belt. Uh, and then our course can help you with that, but also it'll take you much further. And um, so, yeah, it's exciting. And only about 15% of DJs have actually managed to do a live stream so far. So a big growth area. We'll be helping you a lot more with a lot more content this year about that. Thanks for your uh, question, DJ, DJ, or your comment there, DJ George DXM. Hello to Charles in Atlanta. Uh, so um, so uh, DJ Yard Flex who's, who was asking about the, um, I don't know if it was you asking about this anyway, talking about audacity to uh, separate your tracks on a CD uh, and to do what I was saying. Uh, but you do have to make sure your mix is 80 minutes or less. One of the things we teach you in that course I was showing you was how to edit your mix, how to take a finished mix and edit it in all kinds of ways to get rid of mistakes, but also to make it fit a uh, show length or a CD length or whatever. Uh, so that's all there. Uh, so a couple of uh, questions here from Stephen. Uh, I will answer them both very quickly. Stephen says, the, uh, the Hoa Scomba mix stand, pricey, but are they as good as they look? Don't know, never reviewed one. Uh, they do look good, I agree. Uh, when do you think Pioneer will release new controllers this year? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be in the first half of this year or else uh, we might have just heard a sniff on the grapevine about it, but that's just a guess. Uh, so my guess is no time uh, immediately in the near future. Uh, so hi to Mache in the Caribbean. Hello to um, uh, Ronald who says playing out is a really tough thing right now for a lot of us. What do you suggest live streaming Ronald? Just get into live streaming. Uh, it's where everyone is right now because it's all we've got. Uh, hello to Lou in Tampa, California, one of our regulars here, who says, I'm using two computers, one for DJing and one for streaming. With NDI and OBS, I still need a video capture card with my Sony camera. Do I still need a video capture card with my Sony camera? And does everything, video or audio, plug into the computer I'm using for streaming? Thanks. Right, okay. I'll answer this very quickly. This is all answered in the course I just showed you. Your laptop computer that you're going to be using for producing the music for your live stream uh, and your live streaming computer are totally separate. All you're going to be doing is feeding the music from one to the other. So that's the first thing. Uh, do you need a video capture card with your Sony camera? If you're going to use NDI, which is what you say, no, you don't, because NDI is a special box which will then put your HDMI or your SDI signal from your Sony camera onto your Ethernet network, which you then use to get it into your streaming camera. So no, you don't, you know, your NDI card is a capture card. It's just a way of capturing your, uh, way of capturing your, 
um, signal and feeding it in. This whole studio, by the way, if you're technical, um, if you're a technical person, this whole studio is running on NDI. So the empty, uh, the empty workshop behind me, uh, and the overhead camera there, and the side camera there, uh, and the um, the cameras feeding in from our computers, like that one there, uh, and the camera on me now are all running on something called NDI, and it's a really high-end way of getting cameras all into one broadcast. It takes the output from the camera and it puts it onto your Ethernet network. So you have one Ethernet cable going into your broadcast computer and all the cameras are there uh, in really high quality and in pretty much solid, uh, you know, real time with no delay. Uh, it's really good, but you don't have to go down that route. You know, you, you need quite a lot of money to do that, really. It's, it's, a, it's a professional thing. There are much easier ways of getting multiple cameras and we cover it in that course. Uh, so, um, ah, Raoul says, uh, converting record box and tractor for Windows and not Mac. Uh, DJ conversion utilities for Mac only. I'm very sorry, my friend. Uh, so yeah, you can do it for, uh, for Windows. It's not as easy. Um, and I can't immediately give you the best way of doing it right now. You used to be able to do it with, um, with, uh, what was it called? Record... Buddy, Record Buddy, but Record Buddy's kind of gone quiet and I'm not sure whether that works on their Windows implementation because Record Box has gone to Record Box 6 as well, which has caused a few problems. So in truth, I can't answer that. However, Raul is on, uh, or Rahul is on Facebook and uh, you can uh, help, hopefully help him out there on our Facebook page if you've got an answer that's better than mine. Um, uh, Jose or Jose says, what's the uh, main point of Mixcloud going out of beta? Well, people go out of beta when they think they're, they're at a point where their software is stable and, and, and at version one. So I think Mixcloud probably uh, are at that, at that point, uh, Jose. So uh, is there any known software, says David, as opposed to unknown software, of course, uh, that can help organize your music library to simplify the process? Well, the first thing you can do is do yourself a favor and throw away half of it. If you haven't played those tunes in the last year and you're not going to play them in the next year, throw them away. Don't waste time organising tunes you're never going to play. That's going to make it a lot quicker for you to do it. It depends what you want to do, David. Um, there's a nice piece of software called B-Tunes, B-E-A-T-U-E-N-E-S, uh, B-Tunes. Uh, and B-Tunes is uh, good for kind of semi-automating this stuff. Uh, B-Tunes is, um, is an app that's designed to take your playlists and let you analyze and inspect them and then make like playlists and stuff from them as well. It's got key stuff in it as well, but look, clean up this mess. Uh, it helps you to uh, kind of semi-automate this stuff. So it's not just gonna totally clean your library up for you uh, on your own, uh, but it is going to uh, fix it up and uh, help you to get it a bit better. Uh, so look, it's also got the ability to adjust the gain on your track to get them all the same volume. Like I say, it's got key in it, so it can analyze your key. Uh, and it can help you to make playlists based on tracks that sound the same as each other, which you can then use in your DJ software. I really recommend B-Tunes. I'm not sure what it costs nowadays. It's a long time since I've been in a position to need it. Uh, there you go, $34.95 for Windows or Mac. I'd say that's a good investment. Uh, otherwise, just use a good ID3 tag editor. I use one called... Um, Metadatics or Metadatics, um, which I'll show you on Mac. Uh, there's loads of these programs. You could use um, iTunes, or well, it, it used to be called iTunes. It's now called uh, it's now called Music. Uh, but you could use that. The one up. But I love Metadatics on Mac. I think it's a really good program. It's this one here. It costs you ten dollars, uh, and it's a great way of powerfully renaming, reorganizing your tunes, sorting out artist, album titles, composer columns, year, genre. Um, even changing the file names of your tunes, uh, you can do it really, really easily. Uh, it's one of my, uh, you know, best kept secrets really for organizing music. Um, but you know, you don't want to be looking for shortcuts that mean some, some, someone or something else is re-tagging and organizing your music. It's a good excuse to listen to it, uh, but throw most of it away first. <laughs> and you might think I'm being flippant, but seriously, you don't, you don't in any real sense own your music unless you're playing it because you've forgotten it exists. You forget you've forgotten it. So just get rid of it. It will make life a lot easier for you. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, I'm really enjoying this, by the way, people. We're about halfway through now. So if you're enjoying it, you can do me the massive, massive favor of hitting that share button, hitting that like button, hitting that follow button, hitting subscribe, just showing your support for what we do here. We do this completely free every Thursday. Now, the, the idea is to help you guys and girls with any DJing issues or problems you have. Uh, and the... Uh, 
the, the, the give and take is please just hit share. It really does help us. Um, right, so let's move on. Uh, I've just got a note that's come through on the company chat from my wife saying, print this out before you leave. And I know what I'm like. Um, so I've written a note that says print thing. I've got no idea what it is. And I'm going to throw it by the door. There we go. So I'll see that on the way out. Otherwise, you know I'm going to forget, don't you? And I'll be in trouble when I get home. Uh, okay, uh, so let's move on. Have you tested the new M1 MacBook Pro? No, I haven't. Uh, I am personally going to wait for the next generation of that computer because I just think the next gen is going to have all the things in that they wanted to put on the first one but didn't. Uh, but no, I haven't tested it yet. Uh, the uh, next question on the live chat is from... Lou, did you ever get the email from Tractor with their survey? I'd really like everyone to give them some ideas on how to improve Tractor. Uh, no, I didn't get that email and I am a Tractor customer, which is a little bit strange. Uh, but this is something that you shared, I think, Lou, on our, our recent Tractor post, didn't you? Um, so what I'll do, because I'm nice, is go and grab that link from the Tractor post uh, and post it here, here for everyone. In fact, no, it wasn't on that post or else I'd be able to see it. Uh, maybe you can post it, Lou. Uh, post that link in the comments wherever you are. You're on Facebook. And if anyone, anyone's a Tractor user and you want to take a survey and tell Tractor what you think, uh, what you want changing, what, you, what your hopes and dreams are for the platform, what's annoying you, etc., etc. Um, hopefully, Lou can post that on Facebook uh, and, uh, and then... Uh, that way you can take that survey. Uh, but thank you for sharing that. Uh, it's good to see so many of you all chatting to each other as well in the comments. I always say this every week, but we get to about this point in the comments. Uh, and what happens is uh, that I see you all answering each other's questions. Uh, and that I just sitting here scrolling past with a, a warm feeling in my heart and a smile on my face, because that's what this community is all about. It's all about helping each other. Uh, so this is someone over on our Facebook group. By the way, if you're not in our Facebook group, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, this person says, what can I do when I record my practice sessions? Because I always think they're awful. But when I listen to the mix the next day, it's great. Uh, right, that's what to do. And you've just hit the nail on the head there as to the reason why you should record your practice sessions. Always record your practice sessions, people, because the only person who can't hear what your DJing sounds like in the world is you because you're too busy doing it. So instead, record your sessions and listen back to them a day later, a week later, in the car, at the gym, and you'll suddenly realise that, oh, that worked really well, that didn't work so well, and you'll suddenly think, well, hang on a minute, I thought that that sounded quite good at the time, but actually now it's a bit meh. And that, I was sure I'd messed up, but actually I'm loving that now, and you'll learn You'll like, it'll feed back into your DJing and you'll get a, and you'll learn to have a better picture of what you're really doing when you're DJing by listening to yourself. So um, great idea. Record your practice sessions and that's what you can do. And the more you record them, Facebook user, the more the, this kind of like, I think I'm rubbish at the time and, I, I, and actually it sounds good, the more those two will close together and you're, the more you'll see the real you, if you like, when you're actually doing it. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> I can't help you, Carl, uh, but Carl is after livid OHM RGB firmware files. If anyone can help Carl, Carl is over on Facebook uh, in the comments. Uh, so does live stream, does live streaming made easy include the widgets that DJs use like tra track info? Uh, it doesn't include that track info widget because it's just been launched, but we will be you know, up upgrading that course as we go along. As I've told you already, all our courses, you get the, you get the upgrades, you get the, the new versions when they're launched. So, um, so yeah, we'll be upgrading that. We're looking to upgrade it this year at some point because it's only nine months old, but things do move quickly, especially in the live streaming world. Um, so uh, Ali says this might be opening a can of worms we like opening cans of worms Ali this might be opening a can of worms but I'd like to get a digital turntable set up can you suggest a setup I can grow into uh, I also have the scratch course and I would love to move over from CDJs for scratching right so there's no such thing as a digital turntable really uh, unless you mean the you know this kind of digital turntable this kind which is a motorized platter uh, or of course the rain 12s they're another version that look like this uh which are, which are the rain 12 is just a midi controller that one i just held up there the dj 
Denon DJ 6000M is actually a full DJ system, but you know, they're, they're motorized and they are digital. Uh, so you can get those. If you're going to get the Rain 12s, then just go all the way and get a Rain 70 mixer with them uh, and use Serato with it. Um, but really what you're talking about is DVS systems to turn turntables into digital, right? So if you want to get a, DG, a DVS system, I again, I would probably go for Serato if I was getting any DVS because Serato is the leader in digital vinyl. And um, I would get... What turntable would I go for? I like the the Reloop uh, RP seven thousands. They're a, they're a reasonably well priced turntable. I like the Audio Technica. Uh, you know uh, the, the the better Audio Technica turntables. They're great value for money. Uh, there's a whole article on Digital DJ Tips that can help you with this. Um, so I'll show you that. Just uh, googling it now. We Google everything, even our own website. Uh, so this is the article. Uh, in fact. Not the article at all. Here we go. 13 best DJ turntables of 2021. Uh, so go have a look for that article uh, and I'll talk you through what you need to know so you don't make uh, any big mistakes here because it's not just as simple as shelling out on turntables because what you want might change. Uh, so this article will literally take you from beginning to talking you around every single part of a turntable uh, and then it'll give you uh, different price brackets so we'll talk you through the beginner turntables uh, and then move up to kind of intermediate turntables uh, and then show you uh, the pro ones as well uh, so really i can't tell you any more than head over to that article and to help you i will uh, ask my team to post that in the comments uh, so if you can post that in the comments for me team uh, but just go google it go to digital go to google digital dj tips best dj turntables and you'll find that that article there uh, let's grab another question. This is really, really good today. Uh, some awesome questions, people. I'm loving it. Uh, so this is from Doc, who says, great to be here. What other DJ controllers interface with Algorithms apps, apart from the Reloop Body and the DDJ series? Absolutely loads of them. Uh, nearly all of them, I'd say, nowadays. Uh, second to Virtual DJ. Algorithms DJ Pro apps are the best for working with just about everything. So go check on their website. Their website has got a hardware section. Uh, so uh, again, I'll just show you because I like to make things easy for you people. Uh, so if you go to Algorithms website and then click on Hardware or DJ Gear at the top, uh, they run you through all the DJ controllers uh, that they recommend and there are lots and lots and lots of them here. So uh, just check that it's on that list and also there's a whole big list down here as well of, uh, of, of controllers that work with it, if not fully recommended uh, and they will all work fine with it so there you go lots of choices so who's the dj graham says i've just started a sunday show hello to you over on twitch awesome we're going to give more love to twitch here digital dj tips i'm the first to admit we don't give you people enough love uh, we're going to change all that uh, so anyway uh, i've started doing a sunday afternoon radio show on mixler during lockdown uh, Graham that comes to Jib. Oh, Graham that comes to Jib. I know you, Graham. Uh, one of the few Digital DJ Tips students who has actually been here in our tiny little country of Gibraltar. And I've uh, had a lovely time sharing a drink with you. So you're doing a Sunday afternoon radio show on Mixler. Well, I just want to say congratulations, Graham. Really, really good to hear that. Uh, so Desi Johnson says, what's up, Phil? Greetings from Malaysia again. I'm planning to invest in a new console. Do I go for the DDJ 1000? Or the MCX-8000. The DDJ-1000 needs a laptop. The MCX-8000 works on its own as a standalone controller. Decide whether you want to go laptop or standalone first before you start trying to choose a model uh, because they're two fundamentally different ways of DJing there. So to make that decision first. Um, the next question is from... Um, in fact, I'm just watching you all talking to each other in the comments on Facebook. It's just lovely. Really nice. Ronald's recommending MP3 Tag. Yeah, that's a great uh, program for organizing your music. Um, so Tony says, I love that laptop stand. I bet it costs an arm and a leg, this one here, right? It's awesome. It goes up and down like this. It swings around everywhere. Uh, and I can even swing it around like this. Whoa, all the way into there. So I can put my laptop there and I can present webinars from here hi people i can present webinars from here uh, with that laptop right in front of me yeah it's a wonderful stand uh, we've actually got a link for this it's djtips.co slash stand djtips.co slash stand so uh so scribble that one down djtips.co not dot com uh, slash stand and i'm just checking that for you now uh, and it will take you to the page that has got that stand on it 
Uh, look, we've purchased it two times. That's because we've used it in both of our studios. Uh, here it is. It's called the Thingy Club Adjustable Stand. Uh, so uh, there you go. Not that expensive. £50, $70. A lot of those laptop stands that are sold to DJs that just fold up and throw in your bag cost twice that. Uh, let's pull another question up now. Um, I haven't seen any hype reviews on YouTube for new DJ gear post NAM. No, there's no real DJ gear being released at the moment. Uh, print this and throw it at the door, says Avi. You're so funny. Right, it's worked. It's right there by the door. No way I'm going to forget uh, printing out that article for my wife or whatever it is that she wants me to print out for her. Um, so Lou has shared the link to Tractor uh, in fact on Facebook. So if you wanted to go and take that Tractor survey, Lou has shared it in the comments over on our Facebook page at digitaldjtips.com. Uh, so uh, Rohan says, thanks for the tip to record sets. I've started to do that as well. Uh, Keaton says, what features from the Pioneer CDJ3000 uh, and V10 mixer do you want on the Pioneer XZ2? Hope it comes out this year. Right, let's give people some backstory here. So the new Pioneer um, CDJs, the CDJ3000s, which are under that desk there, uh, the new CDJ3000s are very powerful. They've got full computers inside them, just like the Denon gear I held up a minute ago. But they haven't really used that power yet in features. It's all waiting to be rolled out. Now, one feature they've just, and the reason they've done that is for, for continuity. It's so that DJs don't have to get used to all this new stuff at once. They're gonna be adding features over time to make those uh, more and more powerful, mark my words. However, the question you asked was, what features from the new Pioneer 3000s and the V10 mixer uh, do you want on Pioneer's XZ2? In other words, the upgrades to Pioneer's standalone DJ gear that doesn't need uh, that doesn't need um, a laptop, the XZ RX2 R RZ or RZ as well. So, um, what do I want? Let's think. What do I want? The one thing I think would be good, which they've already added to the CDJ 3000s, is that when you accidentally pull out your USB, it doesn't go into an emergency loop. They've now added the fact it'll just now play the whole song. I think that's brilliant. Uh, it's just speed. I just want it stuff to be fast. They're very slow, the Pioneer um, systems. Uh, I want it to be fast and they will be fast. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be nice and fast. Whether the new Pioneer standalone systems end up having like two layers like Denon's has, because Denon's Prime 4, you can use four decks. Uh, I don't know, but that would be nice to see. Uh, but it's going to be interesting because I think you'll find that there will be, um, there will be, uh, a big leap forward for Pioneer's uh, standalone gear. Um, so let's uh, grab another question. Uh, as we move forward into the last 15 minutes, again, please hit share if you're enjoying this. That is all we ask. And if you're catching this, you're just joining us now, it's probably because you weren't subscribed and you weren't getting notifications. Do it. Subscribe wherever you are, not just YouTube. Uh, and you can watch the replay and you can still ask questions if you're watching the replay. My team and I will try and get to your questions even after afterwards. Um, I'm currently learning to use Ableton. I'm really excited about it. Do you happen to have any tips for MIDI mapping my Newmark NS73 to certain Ableton parameters? Uh, no, not really, not necessarily. Um, but if anyone wants to uh, jump in there and help, this person's over on our Facebook uh, Facebook group, Global DJ Network. By the way, if you don't, if you keep hearing me mentioning this Global DJ Network thing and thinking I want to be, I want to be part of that Global DJ Network, uh, you can just go there djtips.co slash global. It is our Facebook group for people who want to uh, basically network with other DJs all over the world. We, we have to ask you in. We have to approve your invitation. You can ask yourself. You can you can click join group, uh, but we, we check you out and we approve you. Over the last few years, we've approved 10,000 people to that group. So on the one hand, it's a really friendly group. Uh, and on the other hand, it's uh, got enough DJs in to be massively, massively useful to you. Uh, uh, you can ask all kinds of stuff there. So uh, I do recommend you join it if you're not a member of Global DJ Network. Anyway, this person has asked that on Global DJ Network in the comments underneath this live. So if you're over there and you've got any tips on mapping DJ gear to Ableton, please go over there and help. Uh, so Stephen, I've got a 1210 turntable, I'm guessing you're saying, and I want to learn to mix with controllers. Do you have a course and what should I be considering? Uh, so if you want to learn to mix the modern way as opposed to the old fashioned way with 1210s, uh, we certainly do have a DJ course for you and I will show it to you. Uh, head over to Digital DJ Tips, click DJ Courses, click Complete Courses and click 
the Complete DJ course. This is gonna talk you through everything you need to know to DJ the way it's done today, following the five-step formula I talked to you about earlier, gear, music, techniques, playing out, and promoting yourself. We'll help you buy your gear, we'll help you assemble a digital music collection. I'll show you everything that's changed, uh, that you can do on modern gear that you couldn't do on your old turntables. Uh, then we'll talk you through things like performing and live streaming, and how to use social media and stuff to get your name out there as a DJ. It covers absolutely everything. It is our flagship course, and it's perfect if you're coming to DJing, having used old gear, old systems, you know, one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years ago. Uh, it's called The Complete DJ Course and it's over on our courses page. Go check that one out. Thank you for asking. Uh, so the next course is, uh, next course, the next question is from Hellaby Bob, who says, virtual DJ stems seems to be better with four channels. I like to use the drums from one track and mix an acapella onto those beats, then setting up the next track, meaning no gaps with four channels. Yeah, virtual DJs stems, this is the real time acapellas, real time instrumentals, real time drum tracks, real time muting and soloing in your chat tunes is absolutely brilliant. Virtual DJ has got more control over it than the other system out there, which runs in Algorithms DJ Pro. Uh, so, um, so I'm glad you're finding that, that to be useful. They're both really, really good. Both of those systems are good. Uh, and you can try them for free. You can certainly try Virtual DJ's one for free. If you go to Virtual DJ's website and download Virtual DJ, you can DJ on your laptop uh, using all this stuff. It's only when you plug controllers in you have to start paying for it. Uh, so a little bit of advice there. Uh, please click like, share, and do all that stuff, people. Uh, it does make it easier for us. My mouse battery is very low. Collect, connect to USB, says the thing in the top corner. Uh, and so uh, I'm gonna scribble that down as well because if I don't put that mouse on to charge, then you know what's gonna happen next time I come into the studio ready to do a live or something, I'm gonna have no mouse. So you know what I've done, don't you? This time, because I threw the pad, I'm gonna have to go and put this one by the door. I had to carefully place that one by the door. So I've got two to do's by that by that door on the way out. <laughs> so, um, do you have another sale coming up? We never tell you when our sales are coming, but uh, we do sales a couple of times a year. Uh, I want to buy the James Hype course, says Spades. You know there will be sales, but uh, we 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 tend to make our call on those pretty short term. Uh, I, there's nothing in the calendar at the moment. The, the big sale of the year, of course, is the. It's a November sale. We sometimes do a spring sale, but I don't know if we'll have time this year because of everything else we've got in the program. Uh, so uh, not sure at the moment, uh, but November is a good time. A lot of people just in November, they buy all their courses for the year because that's our biggest sale of the year. But hey, the course is worth any money. Uh, it really is. We got uh, one of our most popular courses month in, month out is that James Hype course. Just um, give it a go if you don't like it. We'll give you money back. Uh, Mark, I've been live streaming for the past year. I never got pulled down until the other day. I was banned from streaming for life and I will back streaming on Facebook. And I was back streaming on Facebook eight hours later. Facebook, Instagram, you're not going to be able to stream without getting in trouble. Uh, the other platforms, Twitch won't, won't ban you for going live. Twitch, I think, will be legal pretty soon. I think they're working on it. Uh, Mixcloud is totally legal. And uh, YouTube, as long as you've uploaded a file, a lot, like a, a, a video file with all the tunes you want to use first, unlisted, you can check which tunes will get you banned and then you or will get your live stream stopped and just don't use those tunes. It takes a bit longer, but it does mean you can use YouTube. Uh, so uh, let's grab something else as we head into our last 10 minutes this is from uh, dj spiker on twitch when i'm live streaming via obs studio the audio is broadcast okay but the video is sometimes choppy and freezes a few things here again the live streaming course can give you a lot more on this get your video resolution smaller you shouldn't be live streaming at less than uh, any more any bigger than 720 because there's no need so check your video res resolution and set to 4k or something silly like that uh, again, your frame speed, you can set your frame speed to 24 or 25 frames per second instead of 50, uh, which again will just make it easier for your computer to handle that. Uh, you can also uh, make sure your computer is closed. You've got everything else closed that you don't need on your computer because it will probably be CPU that's causing your video to be choppy. It could be your internet connection, your up speed. But if you make your resolution smaller, you make your frame rate smaller, you'll need less up speed. And at 720 resolution, you ought to be able to stream, even with just one megabit per second up speed, 
pretty much all right. So it probably isn't your internet up speed, but also try connecting an ethernet cable if you can between your broadcast computer and your router rather than using Wi-Fi. that might help. All those things can help. Uh, it's hard to know exactly what it is, DJ Spiker, but I hope that's given you some tips. Uh, do you recommend using the Mevo camera for live streaming, uh, says Rudy. Uh, not only do I recommend using the Mevo camera for live streaming, I actually do personally use the Mevo camera for live streaming. It's this little camera here, uh, and it, um, it basically will go live without you needing a computer. Uh, and you use your phone to control it, turn it on and off to change scenes and zoom and stuff. Uh, but basically this camera, uh, once it's on a Wi-Fi network or on cellular, can uh, connected to something that's on cellular, maybe your phone, but also on Wi-Fi, uh, this will go live to all these platforms. So I do my live streaming using this because it means I don't have to mess around with a laptop and I'm live streaming using, at the moment, I'm using Den and DJ's standalone gear. So it's great. I set the camera up, set my light up, set my mic up, Turn the system on and go live. No laptop in sight. Uh, and I, I love that. So yeah, I totally recommend it. It's a, it's a great little camera. Um, the next question is from uh, Phil. It's a technical question on the Pioneer DDJ1000. That's a 1000. That's actually the 1000 SRT, the Serato version. Uh, but uh, that's the 1000. That's the controller that Phil's talking about, albeit the Pioneer uh, record box version. Uh, when using the roll, the beat roll effect, you can only move the roll to another channel when using external sources like it does on DJMs. When using Rekordbox, you can't move them to another channel. Have you heard this before? So you can't move it to another channel when you're actually using it um, or when you are, when you just want to assign it to a different channel. Let me just have a look on this one because it's got the same effect. Uh, I'm just going to run over there. Uh, I'm going to go quite quiet now, people. I'll shout, I'll shout while I'm looking at this. You can't move the roll to another channel. Well, you can. This knob will put it onto different channels. I think you might might be saying you can't do it when it's actually switched on. And I'll be honest with you, I've not tested that. Uh, and I've not tested it on DJMs either. So if anyone's got a, any advice on that for Phil, he's over on Facebook, on our Facebook page, uh, and you can help him out there. But good question. Next time I've got that powered up, I'll have a look. Um, hello to Brent, says, sorry I'm late, but I'm glad to catch some of the live stream. Just go right back to the beginning on YouTube and Facebook and watch it again, uh, Brent. Uh, you'll be able to watch the whole lot on replay there. Um, I still remember day one of Global DJ Network, uh, says Matthew. Uh, it was such a great tool since you started it. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, so Odd Frederick Hindes uh, says, the best solution to use iPad on a full Nexus Pioneer setup. I want to use iPad instead of Mac on Pioneer. What equipment do I need? Whoa, that is a big question. Very unusual. Uh, there is a piece of software called, um, piece of, I always forget the name of this piece of software and I really shouldn't. Uh, someone will help me out in the comments. It's a piece of DJ software that you can use DVS with on iPad. Um, and I can't remember the name of it. It's, it's, it's escaped me. That might work with the DDJ stuff. You might be able to get algorithms DJ Pro to work with the DDJs, but I'm really not sure. I've never seen anyone DJing with an iPad and the full Pioneer setup. I I would just export to USB or SD and just use the Pioneer setup as it's kind of designed to be used if it were me there. Um, you know, people use their laptops with Pioneer gear because they want to use Serato. They've always used Serato or whatever, but unless you've got that reason, why why not just... Why not just use the gear like it was meant to be used? You can use your iPad or your iPhone to prepare your music. It's got a really nice app from Pioneer that lets you do that. But um, but anyway, if you want to do it, maybe someone can help you. That's over on Facebook and it's Odd Frederick Hindenes you want to be looking for over there to help out. Um, so I am going to have one more query, one more question here. First, hello to Chris. Um, Good to see you, Chris. I keep missing you because I'm live streaming to radio every Thursday and Friday, but I will catch you later. Mixcloud is solid as a rock now. Well, there you go. That's why it's out of beta for the person who was saying that later. Um, right, I uh, saying that earlier. Right, I'm going to uh, stop now. Apparently, there's no comments coming in via YouTube. Do you know what? I've not answered a single comment on YouTube and I've just noticed that. So YouTube people, I'm very, very sorry I've not answered your comments today. You're right, I haven't had a single comment in from YouTube. I thought it looked a bit quiet. Um, so very, very sorry about that. Um, I don't know what happened. It's the first time ever that that's happened, that the comments from YouTube haven't come into my desktop. So I'll tell you what, uh, Digital DJ Tips team, 
I think I'm going to be writing another note here. Digital DJ Tips team, if you're watching this, I want you to go and answer the questions on YouTube as a priority, please, and give those people some love uh, because it hasn't uh, hasn't worked. Uh, and I'm going to also post an official reminder in our company system uh, to do that because uh, I'm very, very sorry, YouTube people. It wasn't meant to happen that way. And uh, yeah, you're quite right. I've just noticed. Uh, and that's why I managed to get to the end of the questions just about in the hour we had. Normally, I get nowhere near the end and I have to apologise to everyone. But I've managed to answer uh, nearly all the questions today, or at least all the ones I wanted to answer. And that's why, because there's nothing coming in from YouTube. Uh, so very sorry, people. Uh, Jamie says, are you using Restream by any chance? Yes, we are. Is there a known problem at the moment on Restream with YouTube questions? Jamie, uh, if there is, that will be it. Uh, but normally they come through absolutely fine. Um, so my team is saying the comments disappear straight after the live stream on YouTube, unfortunately. It's not like Facebook. Yeah, I know that, but you can always, yeah, all right then. I'm not expecting you to watch the whole stream and answer them. Uh, yeah, so very sorry, uh, YouTube people. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, YouTube's, YouTube's playing up all the time. We've got 200 people watching on YouTube, but it's saying only 16. So uh, it's just one of those days. Look, this is the world of live streaming, people. It happens this way. Right, we're done for today. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for, uh, for being here today. Uh, please click share if you've enjoyed this. Please follow the channel, even if you're on YouTube. I promise you YouTube will be back to speed again next week, people. Uh, please do follow and click that bell icon. Uh, and... Um, I'll be back next Thursday at the same time. Also, I'll be back next Tuesday uh, with another industry chat for half an hour with some big, big industry burning issue that we'll be talking about. Uh, and join me at exactly this time on, uh, on Sunday for a live stream. And it's called DJ Player Pro. Um, DJ Player Pro, that iPad app that you might work with Pioneer Gear and DBS. DJ Player Pro on the App Store. So uh, that is for you, uh, the person earlier who wanted to know that. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, the couple of people who have shared that with me. You're very kind. Um, right, I'm out of here. Get good, get out there if you can, make the moments, and I'll see you again uh, one of those times. From Phil here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio, bye-bye for now.